Hey everybody, it's Rebecca from devourdinner.com and welcome to my kitchen. Happy Sunday, everybody. I'm super excited to be here. I love Sundays. I love coming live and getting to see each of you and just have a fun time together. So as we're waiting here, I'm going to go ahead and put some links into the sidebar. And as we get people on, oh, there we go. Hello, Timothy. Timothy, you're like my first every week. You are on the ball. Seriously, I love it. Okay, so I've added into the comments. Um, we're going to do a bunch of recipes today, you guys. It's going to be a crazy, fun, crazy fun. Um, and I can't wait to get started, but I don't want to repeat myself a bunch of times. So we're going to wait until people get on and I get the thumbs up. Um, we like to invite some of the other bit larger communities um, that do Instapot or pressure cooking um, recipes to come and watch as well, which is super fun. And so wherever you're watching this, hopefully you're watching this on my Devour Dinner Facebook page. Um, and if you're not, come on over to Devour Dinner, say hello, follow me. That's where you get notifications. Um, I'm just, oh my gosh. Hello, Peggy. Hello, Ergo Spout. Hello, Eileen. Eileen sent me an email this morning. I loved it. It made me smile. Hello, Sherry. Hello, Candace, Tracy, Sandra, Pearl, Jolene. We got a ton of you. Okay, for all of those of you that are on, give this video a thumbs up. Give it a heart. I say this every week, but the reason I do is because it tells Facebook that it's good content and to share it to more people. And it's something simple that you guys can do for me to help broaden my reach. Again, any of you who share this video on your Facebook walls or in your groups, thank you so much. It means the world to me when you do that and you share it um, because you have confidence in my recipes and what I do. And so thank you. All those thumbs ups, all those hearts, all those sharing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, hello, Gail. That's our thumbs up. Um, Gail, welcome, and welcome to our Instapot 101 family. We love, love having you here. I, I truly, I love it. And when I say it, I get goosebumps, and it's crazy. All right, we got a lot going on this hour. It's going to be so fun, and I want to tell you, I'm partnering with my friend, Kate, from Colonesco. You'll see her on here in the comments. It says Ergo Spout. This is the Ergo Spout. You guys have seen me use it before. We're going to be using it today, and we're going to be giving away a, some of these Ergo Spouts. So you have to be watching to win. So don't leave. You got to stay here. Um, I'm going to get the recipes going, and then we're going to talk about the giveaway and how you guys will get on our list. We're going to do a random selection and all of that good stuff, okay? So... Oh my gosh, there's so many of you. Okay, if you didn't hear already, give the video a thumbs up, give it a like. Um, I've dropped the links in the comments. I'm gonna drop them again really fast. We're doing a French toast um, recipe as well as we're gonna do a ham and cheese crustless quiche recipe. Um, so two of my favorite breakfast recipes the French toast recipe is actually one of my top recipe posts on my website. Um, it's been on my website now for quite some time, and I love it, and I make multiple variations of it as well. Um, so we're going to dive in. First, we're going to make a crustless quiche. In our quiche, we have six eggs. We have half a cup of milk, half, half a cup of heavy cream, a half a cup of sour cream, some green onions, some ham, and some Swiss cheese. It's all relatively simple. We're gonna whisk it up. We're gonna put it into a pan. So this is an aluminum pan. You can also use a springform pan um, that will fit into your pot. If you're gonna use a springform pan, it's important to note that you need to wrap the bottom in aluminum foil. Springform pans are not leak proof and you don't want any liquid coming in or any liquid going out so make sure you wrap the bottom of your springform pan. Um, this is a pan. I got it on Amazon. It's called a two-tier stackable pan. And I can actually drop that link for you as well. Um, it is a, an Amazon link. 
It is an affiliate link. You guys know when I'm dropping links to companies that I do earn a small com commission, and so I really appreciate when you do use that. But I use this to make crustless quiche, to make French toast, to do all of my pot in pot cooking. It comes with this nice little handle. So let's get going here, all right? The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my eggs, and you guys, we have our picture in picture going on, so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just gonna whisk these eggs up, break them up a little bit before I add the other ingredients. We're going to add our milk, so it's a half a cup of milk and a half a cup of cream. We're gonna pour that in. We're also gonna add a half cup of sour cream as well. We're gonna whisk that up or break it up. Now your sour cream won't completely melt in, but it'll break up pretty good. And then we're going to add, we're gonna add with that a cup of ham bits. You can use leftover ham, you can use breakfast ham. Um, even in a pinch, use ham lunch meat. Um, it works. So I'm just gonna use these ham chunks, throw some of those in. We're also gonna add some green onion as well. It's about a fourth of a cup of green onion and we're gonna add a little bit of Swiss cheese. Now I'm gonna save some Swiss cheese to garnish when we're all done. And we're just gonna stir this up. Now a lot of people ask the question, can you put um, milk products in your pressure cooker? Won't they curdle? And that's a great question. The answer is that yes, you can, but you need to use a high fat content. So today I'm using the heavy cream and the sour cream, which has that high fat content, which will keep everything from curdling. Okay, that's as simple as it is. I'm gonna take my pan and I'm going to spray it with some cooking spray. Super important, because we don't want it to stick. And then we're just gonna pour it in. So, I'm gonna get all those ham bits out of the whisk. There we go. All right, that's it. So this recipe cooks for 25 minutes um, with a quick release. We need to add a cup of water in the bottom of our pressure cooker, which I've already done. So we have a cup of water in there and I'm just gonna go and set this inside. Put the lid on top. We're gonna close it. We're gonna close our pressure valve in the back and I'm gonna set it to 25 minutes. We're gonna have to hold it down for a minute. The last thing I used, I cooked this in the multi-pot, was a roast. But if you just hold the button, it'll come down relatively quickly. There we go. Okay. So our crustless quiche is ready to go. If you don't want to cook this in a pressure cooker, you can cook it in a pan um, in your oven um, at 350 for about 40 to 45 minutes or until the center is solid. You can also put that in a pie crust as well and make it a, a traditional quiche. So there's number one, done. Now, let's get the next one going. Okay, for the next recipe, we are gonna do is the French toast. So I have taken a loaf of French bread and I'm gonna show you here. I just use one of these kind of loaves and then I use about that much of it, just over half. And I cut it and I cube it like this. Pretty simple, okay? So in this recipe, we have the bread already cubed. We have three eggs. We're gonna use a third of a cup of milk, a little bit of vanilla. We're gonna use cinnamon and brown sugar, as well as about two ounces of cream cheese. 
Um, and then we're gonna garnish it today with some fresh strawberries and blackberries and some syrup. So let's get started. Oh my gosh, I'm loving all these comments. You guys, I love it. Okay, for those of you who just joined in, we're making two recipes today. Right now I'm working on French toast. And if you haven't liked this video, why not? Give me a thumbs up, you guys. I really appreciate it. It really helps the Facebook algorithms, which is why all content creators are constantly asking for it. Anytime you share our videos, it does wonders. So thank you. I know a bunch of you have mentioned that you've already shared it. Thank you so much. I love it. All right. I'm going to add the milk. And I'm going to add a little bit of vanilla. And I'm going to add a little bit of the cinnamon. So the recipe calls for um, a table or a teaspoon and a half or something. And I use a little bit of it in here. And I save the rest of it. And I'm going to show you how I do that. Now, a lot of people with this recipe ask the question, is the French toast soggy? And to me, no, it's not. It's the perfect balance. If you feel like it's going to be soggy, add extra bread in there because then that lowers the ratio of the liquid to the bread. Um, you can now, at this point, do two different things. We can pour this egg mixture over all the bread and we can toss it and move it around so it gets on all of our bread. Or we can put it into our pan for our pot and pot cooking um, and then drizzle it lightly on the top. It, when you drizzle it on top, I find that it is less moist um, because it's, you're only getting little bits of that egg mixture around. So it's really kind of however you want it. Today, I'm going to mix it actually on the bread to show you guys that. So I'm just drizzling this around and then I'm going to toss this. Now, if you can see in the picture in picture, even all of this bread is not all covered in egg. Most of the egg runs down to the bottom, which is why we kind of shuffle it up. You can get your hands down in and get it messy too. That works as well. But I find you get a good, nice balance and it's not, it turns out just fabulous. You get all that egg mixture throughout. Okay, there we go. We're going to take our pan again. This is the pot in pot pan. We're going to spray it. And we're going to add it. Now you can see it kind of is mounding up, right? That's perfect. I do like to kind of tuck the bread to kind of get some evenness across a little bit. So if you just want to tuck it down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some of our brown sugar. The recipe calls for about a third of a cup. You could use a fourth of a cup. You could use a half of a cup. It's really how sweet you want it. And I just put some on top. And then I'm also going to add some cinnamon on top too, because I like cinnamon, you guys. I'm just going to sprinkle that around. And then we're going to get, I've taken my, cream cheese, and I just made little dollops of it. I don't know if you can see that. Is that better? Can you see that I've made just little dollops? So I just use little dollops, and then I'm just going to tuck it down in all the little holes and crevices. So this is about two ounces of cream cheese. Can you guys hear our pressure cooker going over here? It is almost... 
sealed up. Almost. Okay. So again, tuck it in all the little holes in between the pieces of bread the best you can. The great thing that happens with the cream cheese is it gets super melty and then you can kind of spread it around and it's fabulous. So we're gonna go ahead and clean up. This is not sealing. We might get to show you guys what happens when it doesn't, oh, there it goes. Sometimes your pressure cooker won't seal. And there's a lot of questions that people ask on what do I do when it doesn't seal? But it looks like it did, so we're good. Okay, now, this we're gonna put in this other pressure cooker. Again, there's a cup of water in the bottom because we always need that thin liquid. I've also got my trivet. So we're gonna have a trivet in place. We're gonna set it on the trivet and we're gonna set it down in. And then we're gonna put the lid on it. We're gonna close it. We're gonna pressure cook and we're gonna use the plus and minus keys and we're gonna set it for 25 minutes as well. And we're gonna be good to go. So. Look at how easy that was, you guys. I'm going to clean this workstation because you know how I am. We like a clean spot. All right. You guys want to know more about Ergo Spout? I want to tell you more. So this is an Ergo Spout, and an Ergo Spout fits on any size, the regular mouth mason jars. And what it does is when it twists on, it makes it pourable, which is super fun. And so you can fill... Um, your mason jars with like gravies or sauces or salad dressings. Today, I'm going to put syrup in it because, of course, we need a good syrup, homemade syrup, for our French toast. So, that's what the Ergo Spout is. And today, with my friend Kate um, from Ergo Spout, we are going to be giving away three of these Ergo Spouts. Now, I'm going to put a link for you guys as well. There we go. Um, hey, Carly just says, love mine. Carly has the Ergo Spouts too, loves it. They're like fabulous. Um, I can offer a discount code as well. So if you use Devour Dinner at checkout, you'll get an additional 10% off. Um, and that's Devour Dinner, one word, all caps as well. And they're so fun to use for so many different things. You can even put them on the bigger jars and make like lemonades or juices and use it and pour it as well. They are dishwasher safe, um, which is super nice. They also have a gasket ring in here. So everything is sealed and stays put, which is also super nice. Um, and they're like really nice. They come in different colors. So this is the red Ergo Spout. This is the white and they also have a green. Um, on occasion, they might have a blue, but I don't think they have blue in stock right now. And that's the Ergo Spout. So, all right, this is going to get crazy. Are you guys ready? Like, we need to know that you're ready. In fact, what I really need to know is I got to make sure my husband's ready because he's not inside. So, let me just make sure he's ready. So, what's going to happen is... I'm gonna ask you guys a question, and I need you to answer the question in the comments. If you answer the question in the comments, you're automatically entered to win one of the three Ergo Spouts that we're giving away. To win, you have to be present at the end when I announce the winners. If you're not present, then I'm gonna go on to the next random person that's chosen. Um, my husband is monitoring all of the entries, putting them in a random database that will randomly choose. And that's as easy as it is. If my family members are on, you are excluded, guys. Sorry, you cannot win. Um, this is for all of you guys. So here's the question. Tell me what your favorite syrup is. 
What's the syrup you guys like to make or you like? Or maybe you just like um, the generic syrup from the grocery store, and that's okay too. But I want to see in the comments your favorite syrups, okay? So have at it. That's how you win. That's as easy as it is, is commenting. And after our food's all done, we'll be randomly selecting um, that. So I'm going to leave that open for about 10 plus minutes. Yeah, 10 plus minutes, we'll like... We'll let you guys make those comments. All right, perfect. Now, let's make some syrup. You guys ready? Okay. We got all kinds of goodness going on today. So, we gotta get the ingredients out here. One sec. We are gonna make a really fun syrup. So one of our favorites is a buttermilk syrup, and that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna show you how quick and easy it is. This is done on the stove top, and I think, yeah, you guys can see it. Um, in my pan here, I have a cube of butter, and I have two cups of sugar, and we are gonna go ahead and turn this on. We're gonna let that butter melt up and be fabulous. I'm also going to add a cup of buttermilk. Now, if you don't have buttermilk at home, you can make buttermilk by using um, regular milk with some vinegar um, in that as well and let it sit for a minute and it'll turn to buttermilk. So we're just gonna let this butter start to melt and we're gonna add in the buttermilk as well. I have not done shout outs, oh my gosh. I'm gonna scroll up so I can really shout out to you guys. <laughs> Heather's here, um, Sherry's here, Debbie, Mid, Marilyn, Liz, Amy. Hello, Amy, how are you doing? Tracy, Carol Ann, Carol Ann, you've been here week after week, I love it. Um, Connie. Um, hey, Cindy, how's my friend Cindy? I love it. Thanks for joining me. Patty, welcome. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Carly's being awesome. Carly's one of my top fans, and she's answering the questions um, as well. I love all my top fans that are helping, dropping links, answering questions. As you guys know, it gets super crazy, and I can't get to all of the questions, so I appreciate it, like, so much. Um, okay, Christine is asking the question, what do you do when it doesn't seal? And that's a great question. So the multi-pot here for a minute, I thought it wasn't going to seal. And um, if, if it is steaming for a long time, and, but the pin isn't coming up, then the best thing to do is press cancel so that you stop everything. You can open the lid and you need to check your seal. Chances are your seal isn't in correctly and so it can't pressure up. Um, and you can adjust that seal and then try to start it again. It's that simple, not a big deal. All right, so what we're gonna do here with this is this recipe is not on my website yet, you guys. Um, the butter's gonna melt, the sugar's all gonna melt, it's gonna be fabulous. We're gonna let it come to a boil we're gonna let it boil for about one minute, and then we're gonna take it off the heat, and I'm gonna be adding in some baking soda, and I'm gonna add in some maple extract. Um, you could also, if you didn't wanna add the maple extract, you could add some rum extract to it and get a rum buttermilk syrup as well, which is absolutely delicious. So that's kind of fun. Now I have this over medium heat right now because I don't want to scorch it. I just want it to come to a boil slowly so there's no reason to rush. Kind of fun that way. All right, are you guys making comments? Because I know there's like 240 of you on here. So please make sure that you give this video a thumbs up. You tell me in the comments um, what kind of syrup you like. That's your entry into um, winning. So I wanna see those comments all coming on. 
I probably should scroll down. Oh, there's tons of them. Mrs. Butterworth, Vicki says. I love it. Tracy says cinnamon maple. Christine loves maple. Peggy loves log cabin butter flavor. Um, okay, Mrs. Butterworth is like hands down. Oh, Steve's on here. Hey, Steve. Steve likes blueberry. I love it. Um, Sherry says just traditional log cabin. Karen loves a caramel syrup. I love a caramel syrup too. Um, so many of you are traditional maple syrup. Sandy loves blueberry. Tracy loves carries. I don't know which kind that is. Um, good old fashioned maple from Jean. Oh my gosh, you guys are awesome. Just awesome. All right. So our butter is now melted. So I'm going to turn it up to an eight on my little hot plate here. And I'm just gently stirring it so that nothing sticks to the bottom. The recipe goes relatively quickly. Again, the syrup recipe is not on my site yet. Um, it will be. How's everybody holding up with the craziness? How are all of you moms doing with young kids who are now homeschooling your kids or helping them with their education? How are you guys holding up? I worry about all my friends, and that includes you guys. You guys are my tribe, and I worry about how you're doing. So I'm curious. Are we surviving? I'll tell you what. It's hard. I'm going to admit it. It's hard. Um, it's crazy having your days turned around with kids home and working on homework and stuff like that. So it is tough work. Make sure you guys are kind to yourself and you give yourself some breaks um, and recognize all the good that you're doing for your families um, while we're all staying in. All right, this is starting to boil. So we're just going to kind of watch the time. We want it to boil for just one minute, um, but I don't want it to get too hot. Now I have it in a big pan because when I add the baking soda, it's going to foam up. And I want to make sure that I have lots of room so that it doesn't make a huge mess. And it's possible I might make a mess today. So we'll see. So I'm just stirring. And it doesn't have to be a full minute. But we do want it to kind of thicken up as it cools. And so we want to make sure that temperature rises enough um, that it gets it to where we want it to go. All right, I'm going to turn the heat off. We're still boiling away. I'm going to add in some maple. We're going to stir that up. And now I'm going to put in um, the baking soda. Okay? And this is just going to bubble up. We're just going to stir away. Can you guys see that growing? There you go. It gets all frothy and foamy at the top. And that's normal. It's just growing away, but it's doing fine. So just keep stirring it. We're going to let that sit for a minute. Oh, where's my there it is. All right, I've got maple extract all over my hands. There we go. All right, we're going to let that sit as it settles a little bit, and then I'm going to pour it into our jar so that we can have syrup ready to go. In the meantime, we've got about 12 minutes left on our quiche and about 20 minutes left on our, um, our French toast. So that's kind of fun. All right, where are we at? You guys are like so awesome. I have the best people. Can I just tell you, my tribe, which is you guys, you're the best. You're so complimentary and you're so loving and you're so fun. I just love you. And that's why I love coming live on Sundays and just touching base and saying hello and sharing a little bit about my life and what I'm up to and the craziness that goes on um, with it all. So have we slowed down on comments? For those of you that may have just jumped on, 
in order to be entered into the drawing to win one of the Ergo Spouts, please just put a comment of your favorite um, syrup. What kind of syrup do you like um, in the comments? Make sure that you like this video, give it a thumbs up, give it a heart, and you know what? Let's jump over to Ergo Spout's Facebook page and give them some love. So that would be like super nice of us to give them some love since they're giving this away. I'm going to pull the link for you. Here we go. Go give them some love. Make sure you like and you follow them as well. They do some great fun recipes and it's just fun. They're great people. This product was started on a Kickstarter. If you guys are familiar with Kickstarter, and hopefully by the year end, I don't know, I can't say, it's their business, but they're coming out with a wide mouth um, as well. So hopefully we'll see that by the time the year is up. Um, these, this one currently only fits on the regular mouth jars. But I thought it'd be super fun to take like a large jar and fill it full of Easter candy with a big bow and give it away to someone for Easter. Makes kind of a cute present. Um, just fun. I love them. Oh, Gail, you're amazing. Gail just dropped the link. For any of you that want to purchase these, there is the link to um, purchase the Ergo Spout. Please, at checkout, use my code DEVOURDINNER, one word, all caps, um, for 10% off, okay? So, like, that's fabulous. We love that as well. Um, so, Sherry says, looking forward to this every Sunday um, some normalcy right now. You know what? I agree with you. Um, we all need some normal in our lives, and that's why I, li I love going live. I've been doing these lives now for well over a year, every Sunday, um, and it makes a difference because it's something that's normal in my life, um, which is big. It's really big. So <laughs> you guys, your comments are great. Patty says, um, locked down with our cattle. Nothing's really changed for me in this country. Patty, you know what? We appreciate you. We appreciate all of our farmers who are out in those fields. Um, my husband used to work on a very large potato farm. And let me tell you, rain or shine, um, 365 days a year, you're out in those fields or you're with those animals or whatever to bring those crops or the meat um, to each of us. And we're very grateful for all of our essential workers who are working through this time, and um, it means a lot. So I know we have a lot of you on there. Please know you have my love, you have my respect for the service that you're giving to so many people. Um, I appreciate it. My sister's a nurse at a children's hospital, and it's, it's crazy what's going on. So we appreciate all of those essential workers in all of the vast fields. It's really, it's a lot bigger than you guys would think, um, which is kind of fun to see how many people are really essential in this world and what we do. All right, our syrup has like calmed down a little bit. I'm gonna try to pour it, but I'm gonna be honest. What are the chances that this like pours everywhere and makes a mess? I'm a little afraid actually. What do I got down here? Anything good? No, I don't. Okay, now this is super hot, so we don't want to burn yourself. We don't want to have anything like that go on, so I'm going to get this out of the way, set it down here, and we are going to pour, and I'm not going to hold it. I don't want to get burnt. Hey, I did it, you guys. Now you can see it's still pretty frothy. That's okay. I'm still gonna let this sit before I put the lid on. Um, and then we're gonna get this off to the side as well. All right, you guys, that's been three recipes we've done today. So for some of you, I know you come in late, you don't know what's going on. I'm just going to recap really quickly. In our multi-pot from Milthy, I have a crustless quiche. It's a ham and Swiss cheese quiche. 
Um, it's a pot in pot method. Um, in our first one, in our Instapot over here, I do have um, French toast. It is just a regular French toast recipe. However, on my site, I have four or five other French toast recipes. I've got a pumpkin French toast, an apple pecan, um, one with a crumble top. I also have a pineapple coconut one as well. So there's lots of options when you make the French toast, and they're so good. They're so good. And then I've also made some buttermilk syrup for it as well. Um, and those are the three recipes that we've done. We're doing a giveaway for the Ergo Spout, and I'm going to close that, actually. So I'm going to let my husband know that, um, that we're going to close that. So I'm going to give that one more minute, everybody, um, and then we're going to close it so that he can get the random selection tool and do what he needs to do so that he can get me that information to give these away live. And I'm not sure he's watching, so we're just gonna wait for a minute. Perfect, he is watching. He's gonna put all of those in, in where it goes. Okay, um, let's see some faces here. Hey, Diane's back. I haven't seen Diane in forever. Diane, I think, was my first top fan. She's been with me forever. Um, I just, Diane makes me smile. Hello, Diane. Thanks for being here, being one of my top fans. It's wonderful to have you. Um, Jolene, um, oh, Jolene says the apple pecan French toast sounds amazing. Let me tell you, it is so good because I cut the apples up kind of smaller and they just nestle in with all the pieces of bread with the pecans on top and kind of a crumble. It's delicious. It's absolutely delicious. Um, Oh, Rebecca just said she ordered her spout. Awesome. I love it. Peggy's keeping her fingers crossed. Brenda says she's trying these tomorrow. Denise says store brand maple syrup. I love it. Um, Vicki says French toast casserole is a tradition in our family every Christmas morning. We love, we have a Christmas morning for us. We do, um, we do a hash brown egg scramble kind of thing is what our family tradition for Christmas, but we like this for Easter, which is why I thought here we are two weeks away from Easter, and I know everyone's thinking, what do they have in their cupboards that they're going to make for Easter dinner this year? Oh, it's going to be crazy. So here are two easy recipes to serve on an Easter brunch for you guys. Um, I hope that helps. Had a fun that way. Um, you guys want to see something I did this week? Totally non-cooking related. Really, I do have a life outside of cooking, but I'm kind of excited about it. Okay, so our church sent out a request um, to help make face masks. And our church got a hold of a lot of this elastic um, that they gave to the ladies and asked us to kind of go in our closets and do we have some new material that we can use to make these face masks to get out to some of these essential workers, because as you guys all know, face masks are in short supply. And of course, these aren't the certified ones, um, but they're washable and it's something that's better than nothing. So I made this face mask, kind of fun. Um, super simple and easy to do all the way around. There's lots of different like YouTube videos on how to do it, but they really come together super fast. If you have elastic, if you don't have elastic, you can use um, like ribbon and just do ties about on the back of the head, which are kind of fun. Okay. Let's see, my friend Kate just made a comment. She must be responding to somebody because I'm not sure. Um, so Casey, Casey's asking, what kind of spout is it? Casey, it's an Ergo Spout. I'll drop the link again for you guys. Um, So Ergo Spout, you can order them yourself with a 10% discount using my code DEVOURDINNER um, and order it that way. We're going to give three away. I'm sure we're going to see that pretty quickly. Let's see where we're at. Ha, ha, ha. All right, you guys. We have 179 of you still on. First of all, have all of you guys liked this video? Because I want to see a whole bunch of thumbs up and hearts. So if you haven't, please give this video a thumbs up or a heart right now and make sure you're following me. And I'm going to read off our first winner. Now you have to be live. 
So if you're not here, um, the other stipulation, I don't know if I said it or not, you have to live in the continental U.S. Um, they will only ship in the continental U.S. So if you don't have an address in the continental U.S., you can't win. So here's the first one. Jill Wentworth Allen. That's our first winner. Jill Wentworth Allen. And I'm going to try to watch over here. Um, okay, winner number two. You ready? I'm waiting to see if Jill's on. Okay, I haven't seen yet. Okay, um, winner number two. I'm still waiting for Jill. So Jill, if you're out there, I need you to comment. I know there's a delay. Um, I need you to comment that you're, oh, there's Jill. <laughs> oh my, Jill, do you have, I need you to private message me your address. It must be in the continental US, um, but private message me your address. Um, our second winner, Karen Corson Owens, Karen Corson Owens. So our winner number two. Let's see if Karen is on. We'll let Karen have a minute. Now, Ergo Spout is going to choose the color that they send to you, so there is no choice of color, um, but you'll have an Ergo Spout, which is phenomenal. All right, Karen, if you're out there, please comment. I'm going to go ahead. You guys heard the beep. Our quiche is now done. It's been in there for 25 minutes. So we're going to open up the pressure valve on a quick release. If you're afraid to open it up, please make sure to um, use, you can use like the ladle, the back of the ladle. You can use a spoon. Um, if you can also use your finger as well. Anything to just open up that you feel comfortable with. And all we do is we just open it up and we let the steam come out, which is a quick release. Um, hey, Karen is there. Karen, congratulations. You're winner number two. Thank you for staying on with me. And we have the third one. Are you guys ready? Okay, number three, Chris Johnson. It's Chris with a K, Johnson. Chris Johnson, you're number three. Um, if you're on, I need you to comment. Um, and I need you to send me a, a private message with your address being in the continental U.S., um, so that I can get that information to Ergo Spout. So this is pressure releasing. We still have a few more minutes on our French toast. You guys can probably see our syrup here. It's settling. So we have our syrup and we still have all this foam at the top. Let's see here. I'm not seeing Chris. Chris. Chris Johnson, Chris with a K, K-R-I-S, Johnson. Aha, there she is, Chris. I hope it's a she. I actually know boys that are with a K. I could be wrong, so I apologize. Chris, make sure you DM me. Um, you need to have an address in the continental U.S. Um, those are our three winners. I love that you guys stay on with me the whole time and watch. That means like a ton to me all the way around. We're going to open this up now. I want to teach you guys something. This is like super important. Hey, Troy, can you get me some paper, some um, napkins really fast? Please. Just get me like that many. Okay. Eggs and milk and cheese will separate some and it will produce like a yellowy liquid. It's whey is what it is. And so... Thanks, bud. So when you pull out a quiche and you see a bunch of liquid and you're like, oh my gosh, it didn't cook. I want to teach you guys something. Okay. So we're going to open this up. On this top layer, first of all, I'm going to go top down so you guys can see this because I really want to teach you this. Okay. So here we go. You can see I'm shaking it, but it doesn't really move. It's all cooked, but there's little bits of liquid. So I just take a little napkin and I'm just gonna blot it. And it just kind of just sucks it up. And you can see there's just a little bit of moisture on that napkin. We're talking like 
oh gosh, maybe a teaspoon and a half of liquid, maybe two teaspoons. Like there's not a ton, you guys, okay? That's whey. And that's when your cheeses and your milk products separate. That's that, yep. it's kind of a yellow liquidy. Um, so your eggs are all cooked. Like this does not, this is solid, but that's just what separates up at the top. So keep that in mind. Now, to get this out, we are going to use, I guess we will use this. I'm just going to run around the edges to loosen it. And it's all loosened. It's looking really mighty fine. And we're going to grab a plate and we flip it out. Now, sometimes it'll stick. You guys know that's just part of life, um, but it's okay. We're going to handle it. So I just like to flip it out. I'll lift this up. And sometimes when we lift it up, we're going to get, oh, it all came out. <laughs> How good is that? Okay. Sometimes when we lift it out, you will get that separation of whey as well. And so again, I just use, I just sit it around the edge and I just kind of let it suck it up to get any of that extra liquid around the bottom. So down around here, I'm probably getting, I might be a whole tablespoon actually, just to let you know. It's not a ton. Put that back in there. Now, to garnish this, we are just gonna add a little bit of the Swiss cheese because I like cheese, you guys know that. I'm not skimpy when I do this. And this will just melt naturally on its own. And if you want, you can add um, a little bit of your green onions on top, or you can slice the ends of your green onions. Um, my green onions today didn't look pretty. That's kind of what happens when you go to the store almost 10 days ago. But I'll put a little bit of these on top too, because it's good. And that's our quiche. I'll cut into this here in just a minute. So there's one recipe for you right there. Our French toast has two minutes left. You guys are holding strong with me. I love it. Thank you so much for holding this whole hour. I knew this would be crazy, but it'd be fun too. Let's put some more in there. All right, I'm gonna put that ergo spout on top. And it just makes a nice pourable, easy, easy thing for us. <sighs> Sheila says, darn it, I just got here. Um, what is she making and where's the recipe? So Sheila, the recipe is at the top of all the comments. It's also up in the description above. I know lots of you come in at different times. And that's okay. The good news is this live video is here to watch on a replay over and over, however many times, and you can stop it and make things right along with me too, which is kind of fun. Um, so right here, I just pulled out a ham and cheese crustless quiche. Um, I've put some extra Swiss cheese on top with a little bit of green onion. We now have um, our French toast has just beeped at us. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up um, the valve. This is a really weird angle. There we go. So both of these recipes use quick release, which means when our time is done cooking, we open the pressure valve and quickly release the pressure, let the pressure shoot up to the ceiling so that we can open our lid. Um, this next recipe for the French toast, we're going to pull that out and we're going to garnish it. I've got some um, blackberries, some fresh blackberries, some strawberry slices, and of course our fresh syrup. We're gonna drizzle that away. 
Renee says, sorry to have to go. Renee, it's okay. Happy Sunday, friends. For all of you guys that jump in and out, I just love that you're here. It really, it, it's humbling how many of you come back week after week and say hello to me and, and send positive messages all week long. Um, it means a lot to me. I, I really want to just tell you thank you. Um, I appreciate it. My family appreciates it. And all of you who have shared my posts and like my recipes and visit my webpage, it means a lot. So you guys are my tribe. You're my people. I love it. All right. This is almost done. We're going to open this up and we're going to pull this next one out as well. There we go. Let me get our lid out of the way. We got too much going on here, friends. All right. I'm going to put that right here. Now, you'll notice, can you see? Oh, my picture in picture is gone. Let's go pick back. So you're going to notice, see all of the white cream cheese? So I can actually spread that now if I wanted, or I can leave that in whole chunks. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to put this around the edges. Hey, Troy. Hey, Troy. Uh-oh, he doesn't hear me. Troy, will you come here? Will you give me a plate? Will you give me a plate, one of the white plates? Mm -hmm, the big one. Okay, so... When you're getting this out and getting it ready, take a knife, take something, loosen it up around the edges. Keep in mind, it could stick in other places. So I kind of like to really test it underneath so that I can make sure that it will come out. Thanks, buddy. Now, because this is our top, right? You could serve it right from this pan and there's nothing wrong with that. We won't fault you if you do. But I do like a pretty presentation on a different plate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it twice. I'm going to flip it out onto this plate, and then I'm going to flip it onto a different plate. Oh, it's stuck. Okay. So when it sticks, that's okay. We're just going to go and stretch, lift it. Because sometimes it'll stick like right in the middle. There we go. Now we got it. There. Did we get it? Oh, we did. Look. Only a couple of pieces stuck, so not too bad. And then... I'm going to take another plate, reverse flip it, there we go, clean up this workspace, you guys know how that goes, all right, let's garnish it with some strawberries here. Right on top, we're going to add to it some blackberries because we can. And then, of course, here we go, you guys. We're just going to pour this away. Uh oh, that came out rather fast. That's going to be sweet. And there you go. So now we have our two recipes here, our crustless quiche and our, um, our French toast. It's absolutely fabulous. Let's, let's do this. Here is my plate. I am limited on my supplies today, you guys. So I'm just gonna cut this. It won't be the prettiest cut, but it'll show you. Get that cheese pull. 
So it's cooked all the way through. I want to show you guys up close. Let's go close here. Again, we still have some whey going on, but you can see just how beautiful that is. See that? Super nice. I love it. This is dinner for us tonight. Um, do you guys ever like to do breakfast for dinner? It's super fun. All right, we're going to cut some of this. I'm not even going to cut it pretty. I'm just going to cut off this one side. And this is dinner. Ha, ah, I'm so excited, you guys. All right. I know there's the questions. Is it soggy? I don't think that it is. I think it's got some good texture to it. And it's fabulous. Oh, you guys. I wish you were all here. We could make, we could eat it together. That is heavenly. You guys, thank you for spending this hour with me. It's literally been almost an hour. It's been crazy. It's been fun to do so many things. For those of you that have ordered an Ergo Spout, I'm super excited for you. There's so many fun things you can do with it with all the fun salad dressings for summertime. It's wonderful. Um, it's how I just put this in the fridge now and we'll store my syrup. And then I can just pull it out and heat this back up in my microwave to heat my syrup up for a later time. Um, there's so many fabulous uses. So thank you to Ergo Spout and to Kate for doing that for us today. I hope you guys have given her some love over on her Facebook page and followed her that way. All right, you guys. I feel like I say this every week, but it's so important to me. Please be kind. Right now, life is tough. Um, there's a lot of challenges going on out there financially with people losing jobs and um, a lot of that's hitting pretty close to home here at the Devour Dinner Kitchen and um, lots of people are, are suffering right now and so please be kind, please be respectful, understand how important it is to socially isolate and flatten that curve even though you may be healthy and it may not matter for you, it's going to matter to somebody else um, and let's 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 crush this virus and get done with it so we can just have a fabulous summer and celebrate and have this big old party um, and tell stories. But I hope, I hope each of you are spending time at home with your families, with your loved ones, and you're building memories. You're building memories because you've been given the gift of time. Um, love those little kids. Love those older teenagers. Love those bigger kids wherever they are. And use this time um, to spread that joy, to spread that happiness. This doesn't have to be a time of, of being scared and panicking, um, but use that time and use it so wisely, you guys. Um, you guys know I love you. I, I do. I just love you. I pray for you. I hope you're all safe. Um, it's just so important um, that everyone just gets through this together because we're all in it together, all right? With that, you guys, these are our three recipes. I hope you'll use them. I'll, you save them, pin them on Pinterest or wherever so you can make them for Easter Sunday. Of course, I will be back next week. Um, not sure what I'm going to do. Probably an Easter recipe is, again, for you guys. We'll see. And hopefully we'll bring uh, more giveaways um, as well because it's super fun and I love doing it. And I love when brands are willing to work with me like that. So thank you to Colonesco. Thank you to Gail from Instapot 101 Family and all the help that she does. You guys, she works so hard when she promotes these lives for bloggers like myself and other bloggers. And I'm so grateful to her and to the Instapot 101 family and team that's so supportive. There's other groups out there as well. Thank you so much. It does. It means the world to me. So peace and blessings to all of you guys. I will read your comments. I will respond. They're crazy today, you guys. Oh my gosh. All right. Happy Sunday. I'm Rebecca from devourdinner.com. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye now.